Right now at 11, the latest in our investigation into JEA. We've learned that top leaders at JEA were questioned not only by the city's ethics director about lucrative contracts they received in July, but with the JEA board chair as well. Those benefits being referred to as, quote, golden parachutes were guaranteeing each person thousands of dollars if the utility was sold or merged. As on your side, Shelby Danielson reports tonight, the city's top attorney is taking the reins. This started with a letter from the city's ethics director and the JEA board chair. Now they sent this to the remaining executives at JEA and they're requesting for those top leaders to forfeit those hefty packages that combined could cost the utility millions. And they gave the execs a deadline of today at noon to respond. As the deadline approached Friday morning, it was continued silence. Only one attorney responded on behalf of a JEA exec, asking for more time to look over the request. Ultimately, that's exactly what they all got. Ethics Director Carla Miller sent the leadership team a new letter, extending the time frame, but with a new piece of information. Now the JEA execs will be meeting one on one with the Office of General Counsel next week to go over those contracts in question. Contracts they never even had prior to JEA's launch of the ITN or invitation to negotiate to sell the utility. Meanwhile, former CEO Aaron Zahn continues to collect $2,000 a day and he'll continue to do so while on administrative leave as the Office of General Counsel continues their investigation into whether he should be fired with or without cause. We asked Mayor Curry again this week how he wanted Zahn's contract to be handled. I have encouraged the general counsel's office and the work that they're doing to do a thorough review, but to, to, to work as quickly as possible, really, so they can lay the facts out to the board of directors. Also new tonight, we did receive a copy of a letter that interim CEO Melissa Dykes sent out to all city council members, and it says in part, quote, Based on all we have learned through the past year, it is my strong belief and will be my recommendation to the JEA board at our January meeting that JEA best serves the community by remaining owned by the city of Jacksonville. And we do want to point out that that was almost a verbatim statement that Mayor Curry gave to our partners at the Times Union this morning. At JEA downtown, Shelby Danielson, First Coast News on your side.